Today's episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, only the top rated sports booking app in all of North America. I mean, we know safe, secure, and the most important thing, just like the homie Deke, reliable, baby. You gotta be reliable, all right? And we got something exciting this year. So usually, you know, we had the OG promo code for the OG listeners. Y'all know what that was, but the new one, oh, you starting it up with that $5 deposit, right? But you're getting 250 in bonus bets along with, Deke, you're going to like this one, one month of NFL plus premium on the squad, man. Shout out to DraftKings, oh, all man. right? Shout out to DraftKings. This is a simple concept. The promo code is MOATS. You download the app, put the promo code in, initial $5. Then from there, you're receiving 250 in bonus bets that you might use for any time touchdowns. As we know, the games are going on this week, so we're going to be excited about it. But you also can get a chance to lock in and follow your squad, man, with one month of that free NFL Plus Premium, man. So shout out to the homies over at DraftKings. And I also know at times, just like myself, you can run out of control, all right? And the moment gets a little bit too big for you. Well, when that happens, you got to look into your resources, okay? Sometimes you might have a gambling problem. You need some help. For those that live in New York, you know it's the number that you can call. But for everybody else, the digits to dial are 1-800-GAMBLER. I said 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we talking strengths and weaknesses for the Atlanta Falcons, man. You ready to turn the page? It is game week. It is game week, Deke. All right. So when it is game week, for those of you that do not know, we like to do it a couple of ways, all right? We know if we just simply said, Deke, or to the fans, how y'all feel about the Falcons? Y'all gonna tell us they suck, they can't do anything good, we're gonna beat them by a thousand, they wash, they old, none of their young players are good, and all this other stuff. And, you know, I'm all for that. But, at the same time, we do like to have just a little bit of professional respect for the opposition. So, we like to break it down into two things, man. We break down one category, we call it strengths. We're gonna talk about things that, when we watch the Falcons, we like, you know what, we think that they do do this well now to what degree that's different but it's like yo we do think that they are capable of that and then we're also going to talk about the weaknesses as well man places where we think that we should be able to exploit them and hopefully have a lot of success versus them man but um you know like i said that's how we're going to get this convo rolling so deke do you want to start it off with the strengths or you want me to start it off with you know a couple of strengths that i got on my side man yeah i can start it off all right let's get it First thing I got written down here is talent. Like mm. they, they got some talented players, both offensively and defensively. Yeah. John Robinson, he was a top 10 pick just a year ago. Drake London, he was another top 10 pick mm -hmm. two years ago. Their O-line's pretty solid. I mean, that's actually the second strength. I jumped ahead of myself <laughs> a little bit. But on defense, you got Justin Simmons, who they just signed. He's an all-pro, all-world yeah. safety. They already had Jesse Bates. Signed him last year from the Bengals, who, you know, he had a really good season last year. I, I got to give him some respect. He's still no making Fitzpatrick, but hey, he, he, he had a few picks, had some nice plays. He, he's, he's in the top five. He's in the top five. He's in the top three. He's up there. Uh, AJ I love Thoreau, it. I love it. Quarterback. Grady Jarrett. He's yeah. a multi-time pro bowler on that defensive line. Mm -hmm. They got some talented players. I mean, Michael Penix, their backup quarterback. He's pretty talented. And then, uh, yeah, that's 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 the first of the strengths. Just overall, like, good quality, talented players. Yeah. Second, I alluded to it, is their offensive line. They probably got a top five offensive line in this league. So that's going to help them in the run game, mm -hmm. pass protection, all that stuff, help out Kirk Cousins back there. And then my third strength is the newness of this team. I don't, and I'll give Cousins some credit. You know, I'm not a Cousins guy, but in particular, like them just having a new quarterback yeah. in house here, like that's gonna give them at least a few more wins. But yeah. they also have an overall newness to this team too. Like they have a bunch of new players. I already mm -hmm. mentioned Justin Simmons. They got Matthew Judon, who they just traded for. Now I do think he is a little bit over the hill, more on the back end and everything. But adding him, that's not gonna hurt you at all. Mm -hmm. They brought in Darnell Mooney on the offensive side, a receiver. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, they're just a whole, like, fresh element to this team, which is, I, I think, what they needed after 
these last three years with Arthur Smith down there. And Arthur Smith, I'm not even I'm not even ripping it on him or, or anything. It's just that dynamic, that vibe wasn't yeah. right. And I, mm-hmm. if anything, I do blame more of the quarterbacks that he had, like Desmond Ritter and Heineke, Mariota, like that mess that he had to deal with. It's actually a, yeah. m- maybe more of a compliment to Arthur Smith that he was able to go seven and ten these last couple of years with those guys. Because Ritter just got cut by the Cardinals. He did, bro. Like, yeah. Literally, he was the Falcons' future slash mm-hmm. starting quarterback these last two seasons yeah. and he gets cut so yeah falcons needed a re-up they needed a refresh and you could do worse than bringing in kirk cousins and a couple of those other guys that i named so that yeah that should help them i mean you go from seven and that should that should help them at least get to 500 bare minimum i would say for this season and and that weak yeah. division that's the nfc south so i think they're yeah they're looking at nine and eight ten and seven for this season yeah. just just by the additions they got personnel wise yeah i like it bro i like it you got any more i ain't want to cut you off i ain't cut you off no that's good uh, uh, no that's uh, yeah that's it okay okay i mean we got a lot of similarities man um in terms of how we view the falcons in terms of the strengths you broke down a ton of the new additions so kind of for me man i just said you know their overall talent i was agreeing with you man uh matthew judon Bajan, i forgot those to say cow pits yeah, yeah, like Pitts is a monster, man. Or at least athletically and matchup wise, we know production. We want to see more consistency from him. But they got talent on, you know, offense, defense, skill position, trenches. Like they have players. And I think that's one of the ones where it's like you can't allow how we perceive the Falcons as a whole to make you overlook the fact they actually got some good players that can beat you if you don't come down there and operate like they're professionals. I mean, you talk about Kirk Cousins, right? We laugh about him because he's obviously the lightning rod topic of you're not an elite quarterback, but let's be real. You look at his numbers the past five seasons and put him up versus a lot of other quarterbacks, and it's like he's going to be in that top half every single time just based off of what he's able to do. Now, in terms of how does that replicate, does that give you big postseason wins when it's, you know, the road is getting narrow and it's a single elimination. You have to be perfect. Nah, not so much. But in regular season, Kirk Cousins has been one of them dudes the past couple of years in the regular season, man. And that's the thing that I do feel like benefits the Falcons in a major way. Having that calming presence, kind of like what we talk about with Russ being here. It's a different level of confidence with your team. It's a different level of confidence with your offense when you have a proven QB1. Kirk didn't get $100 million because he sucks. Kirk got $100 million because he's going to give you 4,000 passing yards. We know this is what he does. You know, we go talk about can he do it in the postseason and consistently do it week after week. That's a different convo. But regular season-wise, he's in that DAC convo. We talk about of like, yo, they can do this, man. They think, 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 dodge you up a lot, man. So I just think for the Falcons, they're finding a lot of confidence in that because with that offensive line, he should be able to play well. So I think that they feel good about that. I also think that from a, a defensive standpoint, they revamped the secondary, man. Not overhaul because we know um, Bates was already there coming off of a career year where, you know, he did lead the league in picks. But to bring in a Justin Simmons, man, we wanted Justin Simmons. That's a dude that we talked about like, hey, man, he could come here. So him being down there, when you're talking Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell, Justin Simmons, that's a pretty legit secondary. Then you talk about, like I said, adding Matthew Judon up to the front with the Grady Jarrett. And now you're like, okay, is this the guy that's going to be your consistent one-on-one pass rush winner? It's still questions with Judon because he's coming off of an injury in his own right. But you look at what he's done these past couple of seasons, it's like, yo, he's been a high double-digit sack guy, man. So you kind of have to respect that. And I definitely love the new coaching staff. Man, when you talk about Raheem Moore coming in there, it's a certain energy and excitement that comes with that. And I think that a lot of those guys believe in him. And I think that they're also because of what we saw happen in Houston last year, right, with D'Amico Ryans and how they were able to have success out the gate, a defensive coach. I think a lot of Atlanta fans are kind of looking at Raheem Moore and saying, well, shoot, when you was out in L.A., you were thriving, killing that defense, was doing what it's supposed to do. You won a championship. Why can't you come here and do the exact same thing that we saw D'Amico Ryan do? And you kind of got two options at quarterback with Kirk. And if that doesn't work out the way you want it, you still got Michael Penix as an option. So I think just the overall optimism surrounding that team is high. And you brought up their division. Their division sucks. So I think for them, they're also feeling like, yo, we could legit come out here and win this division. So you just kind of have to fight that confidence early on with them, man, in terms of, like I said, one of the other strengths that I see. But um, 
enough of the good stuff with them, man, because it's going to sound like we Falcons radio over here. You know, we ain't trying to ever be confused with that. But uh, how you feel about the weaknesses, man? Uh, You know what? I'm going to flip the newness and the freshness and kind of say that like, it could be in a gift, gift and a curse here for the mm-hmm. Falcons, too, at least for week one whenever they're playing us because – there could be some inconsistency. There could just be some unfamiliarity, like getting used to each other that goes on. Like we we saw it, what was it? When, uh, what, three, four years, whenever Brady went to the Bucks. Oh yeah, early we on. Thought, yeah. We thought immediately, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Brady, it's Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Yeah. I think Leonard Fournette was signed at that he point. He was, just like, yep. Look at this offense. I think Gronk was there too. Shoot, it uh, was they're, they're gonna be fine behind, week one. behind uh, Ronald Jones. Yeah, it's Tom Brady. There, yeah. It's Tom Brady. It's all those guys. Like the offense, they're gonna be fine. They go up against the Saints week one, and it didn't look good. Remember the it Saints? Them them, didn't the Saints whoop them twice that year? Yeah, they did yeah. actually. Yeah, but week one, yeah, it, 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 it took them a while. It took mm-hmm. them like two or three weeks, and that's Tom Brady with Mike Evans, Godwin, Gronk, all those dudes yeah. down in Tampa Bay. So that could be an effect here with. A guy like Kirk Cousins going to a new team, having new receivers and everything. And mm-hmm. even with Justin Simmons on the back end, like he's trying to get familiar with the defense. I'm, I know he's good and everything, but I, I don't think they're going to be as optimal as what they will be yeah. midseason just because it's it's so new. So it's, it's a good thing for the Falcons because they needed that as an organization. But early in the season, that could be a little bit of a detriment to them mm-hmm. and help us ultimately. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see here. I got front seven and pass rush as another weakness for them. <laughs> like if Matthew Judon's your main guy. Talk your talk, hurting. D. Talk you're your hurting. talk, D. You're talk hurting. your talk, man. He's coming off a down year with the Patriots last year. We know he's a good player and everything. <laughs> talk down year talk. with the Patriots. He's like, what, 32, 33? Hey, slowly, man. And then they got a guy across from him. I can't even pronounce his name. I'm about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. That's that's your top two. You're struggling, and then outside of Grady Jarrett, they don't really have anyone else on that front seven that I'm scared of. Like yeah. Troy Anderson, I like him at inside linebacker. I, we mm-hmm. talked about him whenever he was coming out of was college that, what, two years ago. Now, yeah, yeah, but mm-hmm. all right, is he like that right now? I don't yeah. think so. And then you got Caden Ellis. He's one of mm-hmm. those like guys that elevated just last year to being a starting guy but before yeah. that was a special teamer for like his first like five or six years there's really no one i'm worried about that much on the front seven yeah on offense yeah i mean they got good players the line's good they got good receivers john robinson cal pitts kirk cousins like it, on paper really solid unit on offense but i do mm-hmm. think some of that unfamiliarity and just being new could be a detriment to them for week one i like it Ah, like it, baby. And Kurt coming off that uh, kid. Let's say too. talk like, that talk, man. Come on, either. bro. Come on now. Let's not overlook yeah. that. Yeah. And he had the injury midway through the season. It's not mm-hmm. like Aaron Rodgers, where Rodgers had week one the full first. season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally week one had mm-hmm. the full season, had the full twelve months. I guess this is going to be what nine months for Cousins. Yeah. Maybe nine, ten months for his return. Mm-hmm. Not something to completely overlook. Not At least for week one, minute. sure. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe Cousins gets in a groove after the mm-hmm. first month of the season, but I, I feel like things could be a little shaky for yeah, him. Yeah, because we're saying just out the gate, this is week yeah. one. Like we haven't, he didn't play any other preseason games. Penix played the first new coordinator game, too. They got yeah. Zach Robinson in over mm-hmm. from the Rams. Like I think he's good. He's under that McVay tree or everything. But yeah. first game, and he's all young. new players. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So for me, man. Once again, man, we hit on a lot of the same stuff. So shout out to you for that, man. I like it, Deke. I like it when we're on the same page with this stuff, man. But um, I started off with a lot of new pieces, whether we're talking coaching staff, whether we're talking the quarterback, whether we're talking the talent that's on defense as well. It's just a lot of new pieces. Some of it has been here throughout the whole offseason. We know with Judon and Simmons, they're recently added onto this team so when you're just talking about continuity when you're talking about synergy everybody being on the same page it's hard to get that without having in stadium reps together it's hard for me to know how you're going to react or how you like to do certain things until i get a chance to get in stadium with you and because some of these guys haven't even been on the roster you know for a month let alone two months it just, to me, I think that that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for all of those guys. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It's a reason why, you know, when we talk about 
great teams versus a lot of talent being assembled, that great team, nine times out of ten, will have more success and win versus a team that's just full of talent, but the pieces don't know how to play together, don't know how to react to each other and things like that. So I think early on that will be a benefit for us. I also look at their coaching staff, man. Yes, we can be excited about a Zach Robinson. Yes, we can be excited about a Raheem Moore. Uh, Raheem Moore. But at the same time, it's like, have you guys actually been in this role with this team and actually have had success? When we look at Coach Tom, it was like, yeah, we've seen you do this. Repeat, wash, rinse. When we talk about Arthur Smith, hey, man, we saw you at another spot where you did have some of that success. But we also saw where it was your first opportunity that didn't work out. So when I'm looking at those guys, I'm asking myself the same thing, man. It's a lot of coaches that get that opportunity that were hyped, talked about, and never live up to it for whatever the reason may be. I mean, I even think of Eric Bieniemy, right? Granted, we know he went back down to college, but it was at one point where that was supposed to be the hottest ticket, the next thing. And it's like, Washington didn't light it up when he was there. So it's never going to be just this foregone conclusion in my eyes. I need to see it and I need to see those results and be replicated over and over for me to truly think that, yeah, you're like that. So that part, like I said, man, to me, is something I think we're going to be able to take advantage of. Now, in terms of their pass rush and sacks, Lord, Lord, Lord. Now, I could really talk greasy about them because the homie doesn't play for them anymore. Shout out to you, Bud Dupree. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? L.A. with the Chargers. I know you're going to cook up over there. But ah, Atlanta, Lord have mercy, baby. Yeah, like you said, man, if Matthew Judon is your best pass rusher, I don't feel like that's enough to be the guy. I think he's a dope player. I think he's a heck of a player in terms of well-rounded and stuff like that. But it's just a different style of player he is compared to like a TJ Watt or a Miles Garrett or a Micah Parsons where you look at those guys and say, yeah, if all you got is that guy, yeah, he can stand alone. He's like that. He jumps off the screen, force multiplying, things like that. With Judon, I just look at him as, yo, he's going to get his numbers. He's going to ball. But I don't feel the same sense of, yo, he can take over this game and shut the whole city down just based off of him winning the one on one pass rush. I don't get that when I watch him, but I do think he's a productive player. But I think that that's something that bodes well for us because we know our O-line, we're going to have some questions up there. But what's better? Man, going against a D-line that struggles to generate success in terms of rushing the pass, whether that's their D-line, their linebackers, them blitzing, they just struggle, and they've been like that the past couple of years. So we'll see with Raheem Moore if that changes, but until I see it, I'm going to be skeptical about it. And then uh, I had their offense identity because, once again, when you're taking over new coach, new quarterback slash quarterbacks, because I'm sure the way that they rock with Michael Penix a little bit different than what they might try to do with Kirk Cousins. It's just like, man, what's going to be your approach? Are you going to try to play more through a Bajan? Are you going to try to let Kirk be the guy that can sling it and be more of a volume passer? Kirk is coming from an offense where he had a Justin Jefferson over there. Who is that equivalent in this offense where he can just force feed that? Are you going to play through no your cow? Right. Are you playing through cow pits? Like, who is this guy? So I just have a lot of questions about just as a whole, how are they going to feature certain guys in concert with how Kirk likes to play? Because Kirk is a rhythm passer, man. He wants to know, hey, that's my guy on the back. So he's always winning. That's my guy. I got him. Or this is my running back. I'm going to dump it off. I'm like, you don't really have the other guys just yet. You got Bajan, which you feel good about, but. I just need to see what's your offense identity. And then with Kirk, bro, you ain't played football in a minute. And they gave you 100 guaranteed fresh off of the Achilles before you even took a snap. You were still in the heart of rehab. And they drafted Panic. You killed him, so I'm saying? So it's like, what is the messaging? Do they truly yeah. believe in you, Kirk, or do they not believe in you, Kirk? Did they give you this money and then kind of regret it and now they draft this kid? Who knows? But I just think that there is a lot of just weirdness going on with that scenario. And yeah, I think early on in the year, it could have a negative effect on him. Now, like you said, man, a month, two months into this thing, when he kind of gets his legs back under him, I think it's a different conversation. But right now, man, the last time he took the fill in the NFL game was when he tore his Achilles. So Did he even play in preseason? I don't no, know. he did not. No. Yeah. And, and like I said, with Penix, Penix only played in the first game, and they didn't play him in the next two. So when I'm looking at Kirk, I'm like, bro, last time What's he was the on deal that with field, that? I think they would just treat, I don't know. I don't because I didn't see if he was hurt or not, but yeah, he was out there for that first one. Then after that, it was like, nah, man, we're gonna put the other cats out there. I'm like, all right. 
but Kirk didn't we take need to sit any you snaps, out, man. So, so you, yeah, I don't know. We yeah. need to sit you out so you could be a pro at sitting out this regular yeah, season. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> if any, I'm like, yo, play him a lot. But you look at some of the other rookie quarterbacks, I just don't know if they were kind of viewing him the same way with, uh, who was it, Chicago. And then they played Caleb, like, I think the first two preseason games, maybe? And then uh, said, Not the Hall of Fame game. I think it oh, was the middle two. It was middle two, middle they two. That's four. what it was. Okay. Yeah, but I say, because it's like, man, we're seeing even with just around the league, like some are playing their rookies, some sitting them. So I don't know, but I'm like, yo, he that wasn't going to start this year. All. Yeah. I'm like, let the it's kid go out there for and play, Caleb bro. Williams or yeah. Jaden Daniel because they're going to be the starter. Right, you, yeah, right. you want to not risk injury for maybe yeah. the last game. Yeah, so that was the thing. I was like, that didn't really add up. I didn't follow Penix enough in the preseason <clears> to know if he was hurt or anything. But right, right, yeah, because I know it was like I said. Obviously, you know, guys get banged up and stuff like that. But yeah, I hadn't seen anything where he was a reason why he wasn't going to be out there. So, mm-hmm. all right, we're on the same page then. Yeah, but that's my thing. I'm like, I feel like across the board in terms of the weaknesses, there are certain parts that we will be able to exploit, and I think some of that stuff is more self inflicted than it has to be manufactured from us. But I think that's a good situation to be in because I do feel like, you know, when we're talking about our ability to rush the pass, like, yeah, they got a good offensive line. But, man, have you seen TJ versus the Falcons specifically against Jake Matthews, man? Like, that's one of the ones where typically TJ feels pretty good about these matchups, man. TJ is a productive player versus the Falcons, man. So I look at that, and now I'm saying, you know, we've added to that group, like, the trenches, like, I just think that it can create a very hostile environment for my man Kirk over there. And I yeah, don't think that they it, got the receivers that winning that are winning one-on-ones like that. Like Drake Lennon is a good player. I don't see him the same way I view a GP. I don't. Yeah. And it's like if that has to be your guy, I think that you're gonna come up short. Yeah, because if you look at it, this is a good matchup. Like I'm I'm not it gonna is. even front on it this. Is. Like this is a good matchup, but I like our talent over there. So you, you wanna talk about them having talent? I like ours better than theirs across the board uh, i guess say, maybe you could me you can maybe give him a, a little bit of a nod on i was gonna say how you feel with back? the receivers maybe yeah. i don't know i mean cal pitts and muth I, I know pitts is more talented but mm-hmm. in terms of like production in the league up to this point can we say that's a wash fair yeah maybe you lean pitts a little bit but then you got bajan mm-hmm. and algier versus Najee and jay Lamorne. like mm-hmm. ah, i mean maybe it's just pick your poison there pick your preference Drake London versus Pickens. I'll take Pickens. But then they got mm-hmm. Mooney. More more secure offensive line. I'll yeah. give him that. And then you could go mm-hmm. Cousins versus Russ. You want to say that's a wash. I'll lean Russ because of the, the pedigree, the Super Bowl, and all that type of stuff. But you go to D. De- I think we washed them on defense. So like I think yeah, I think I we you- have just if you want to say overall talent, we have the overall talent edge. And you could yeah. say some of the same stuff that we're talking about with the Falcons with us having new pieces and everything. But mm-hmm. with us having the overall talent edge and then the continuity yeah. with Tomlin being here, like, I don't know. I, th- I think that helps us. And and it's going to be a borderline home game for us, too. No, I, I it's, think it's, it's 60, going to be a home game. It, it will be 70% black and gold in there, guarantee you, bro. Absolutely, man. But like, I would probably – I would give us, like, a, a minus three. I would say okay. we're – favorites by like three points or something going into yeah. this i don't know what the books are saying but that's how i would lean it, yeah. it again it's a good it's match close. but i'm not yeah. saying it's it's like a, a seven point spread or an eight point yeah. spread or anything but that that's how i would I, I think we we got a little bit more going for us right now yeah because to me i kind of i'm back and forth in the sense of i think both teams have a ton of overall talent i just look at the marquee positions and that's the part where i kind of fall back and forth because i say okay a quarterback Kirk cousins versus russell wilson both guys are big question marks if we're being fully transparent going into week one, right? Russ struggled to from his standards last year. Kirk got hurt last year and tore his Achilles. Prior to Kirk that, Kirk was playing good too. But prior to that, Kirk was playing well. But has Kirk ever been able to do what Russ has done, which is lead a team to actual Super Bowl and win it? No. So that's part of the knock on Kirk. Then I look at the receivers. It's like, all right, we got GP who's a freakazoid down the grass making circus catches, but. In terms of just the every down element of it, I don't know if he's necessarily going to give us that. Drake London is going to give you the every down element, making you the short to intermediate stuff, but is he actually going to be able to scare you at wide receiver one? I don't know that just yet. I don't feel like he's done that to this point. You know, now we're talking about the tackle situation. It's like, all right, O-line, yeah, they got the nod on that, man. I'm with you. But I feel like we washed them with our pass rush. 
Yeah. And that's the flip side. It's like, I love our pass rush. I love their second. Linebackers, too. We yeah. got the linebackers, the D-line, everything. Every, pretty yeah. much. I mean, you. For me, I they like got their the second. Additional, they like, got the additional safety, but we got yeah. Minka. I mean, Minka with the KZ Elliott combo versus Simmons and Bay. I guess you could give it to Man, them overall. Look, I was maybe. about to say, I can't even lie to myself, bro. The combo maybe. of Bates and Simmons is better than the combo of Minka and Elliott or Minka and KZ, with all due respect. Like, we love Mink, but I just look at, okay, if Minka and Bates or Minka and Simmons are all within the same stratosphere, they got two of those guys. I kind of look at this scenario like the Jordan Poyer or Micah Hyde scenario. It was like, yo, you talk about two guys that we would all agree are top five safeties versus one guy who we feel is the best safety or are you going to put him in the combo of top three? So that's why I'm just like, yo, it's two of them. It's only one of him. And then right. you got AJ Terrell, who I just say in my mind, it's like, yo, you're the year ahead of where jpj is about to get to it's like we've kind of already seen you have the high have the low and now you got him back up jpj hopefully you don't have that low but it's like we just need to see that next year the full length we just haven't seen that just yet from him so that's why like i said for me i like their secondary just a little bit more because of the addition of simmons because we're talking about bro you got two all pros back there right now man we don't have two all pros in our safety room just yet but hopefully you know like i said man one of them dudes whether it's deshaun elliott or casey could develop into that but that's my only my only hesitancy with that man mm. mm -hmm. yeah i like jpj over terrell i i get what you're saying though mm -hmm. terrell did have a little bit of a down yeah. uh swing last year mm -hmm. so we haven't seen that from jpj just yet yeah. but terrell's been in what this is third year now whereas yeah. for jpj we saw him play what 12 games we, hey, we got Dante Jackson too. I guess oh, our, our main you, concern yeah. is that slot cornerback. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying, thing. bro. I'm they, like, they yeah, at least bro. have that shored up. Yeah. We're going to be rocking with, I guess, Beanie Bishop. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know hey. what we're doing. I think we just, didn't we sign someone yesterday, two days ago? We, we did. Um, oh, man. In London? One? Yeah. <laughs> He said, I don't man, know what we're it's doing. A, we've, it's a, it's a very Graylin Arnold. Is, is it Graylin Arnold uh, with no. Beanie Bishop? Uh-uh, uh-uh. So, because we didn't keep, we only kept Jalen Elliott. He was the only other guy that we kept. Remember, we got rid of uh, Graylin. We got rid of Anthony Averett, Tim, uh, Thomas Graham, who was the starter in two of the three preseason games. We had cut him also. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm seeing Jalen Elliott mm -hmm. and Cam Sutton suspended. Yeah, bro. We 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 kind of thin there, and we're going to play them safeties down there, I believe. You know, you're going to get some Ks yeah. in there. You might get some Elliott in there. But you could just hear how we we're talking about. We do got Darius Rush, too. Right. So you, we got Darius Rush, too. It's like how we talking about these guys is just, I think, the way that we would pull up a Falcons player that's not a starter and be like, who? I don't know. Can he? I just think that outside of Pittsburgh, People go look at the Darius Rushes, the Jalen Elliott, the Benny Bishes, and be like, hey, bro, I love this matchup right here, bro. This is a strength for us. This is a weakness for the Steelers. We're about to exploit that. I just think that that's how people going to look at our situation right there as well, man. But we ain't tripping on that, man. They bring better it. not be saying that bring about it, man. Corey Trice. They better yeah. not be saying that about him because he's going to prove them wrong. I, I, You know I'm down for all that. But you know, like, bro. It's people that talk about our offense, quarterback, O-line situation right now very differently than how we talk about it. Just outsiders, you know what I mean? Well, they they're probably right rest. about the O-line. <laughs> Up to this point. Hey, look, you, we always optimist. We like, yo, bro, heck, he nice, that dude. That, that. And they like, nah, I seen the preseason. He got work. Who's your quarterback? Is it Fields? We got a lot of injuries on the yeah. O-line right now. Mm -hmm. Say Malu being out and then Falutani being out. Broderick Jones yeah. looking and like a turnstile in preseason. I, that, that that had me a little concerned. Zach Frazier looked great. So, like... You lose her there, big, so no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am a little concerned. I thought, I, I thought I'd be feeling a lot better about the O-line going yeah. into this week one matchup. I, I'm with you. I the promise I'm with you, bro. played a little bit of a part of it. Yeah. And wasn't expecting Broderick Jones to look like that. Yeah. But it's week one now, so we should get a way different version of Project. We know week week one. Yeah, that's what I mean. Maybe, maybe I should have expected it. Maybe yeah. I should have expected Deke, Project to look like if, that. If Deke, Deke, if Project come out here and block everybody to sleep on Sunday, I will be the first person to hear on Monday apologize. I'll be like, listen, I wasn't familiar with your game. All right, I didn't know that you weren't a preseason player. I thought last year was a fluke, a one off. Now I know. Okay, I just need to see it look different in the regular season. If he give me that Sunday, bro, I promise I'm with you, bro. I promise I'm with you. 
I just need it's to see that it. though. And then some of the comments he's made are a little concerning too. Of this is the healthiest I'm gonna be. <laughs> I didn't like how that sounded either, bro. Like we went with it. I just didn't like how it sounded. It, yeah. He said, "This is the healthiest I'm gonna be. Zero deal, excuses it is for my it is. performance yeah, yeah, yeah. preseason." <laughs> She's like, no, Can't you no, give me no. some excuse? Give me at least one excuse. I need one excuse. My arm's a little stiff in this bro. sling thing. I, I'm just, I gotta get to used maneuver. to it, you know, punching yeah, on this side. Like yeah, my, my feet are better on the left. If you say that, I promise the nation will love you. They ain't gonna trip it off. But it's just for right now, when you hit us with the, yo, there's no excuse, we're just like, I'll play hey, either side. Bro. I'm good on the right side. We're like, hold on, man. Hold on. All right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> mm mm. But yeah, we shall see, baby. We shall see. But huh, that is how they're going to talk about us, though. And yeah, we got to live with it, man. Up until well, everyone's been shitting yeah. on Russ the whole offseason. Right. What, they say, what they say, we we, we got disrespect. We were hoodwinked, man. Y'all tricked us. It wasn't no competition, man. How feels ain't in the comp. Like, bro, a lot of people are not believing in Russ, man. They think it's over for him. They think he's washed. So we're going to find out. But I, like I said, that's the weird part about it. I'm sure it's going to be outside of Pittsburgh, right? A good amount of people that are looking at this matchup like, yo, maybe they do got the better offense. Maybe they do got the better quarterback, just in the sense of Kirk Cousins at this stage versus Russ. Now, we don't agree with that, but I think that that's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be skeptical on early on until Russ shows what he's capable of and that he is still one of those guys, man. 